Hi, everyone. I want to welcome everyone tonight. We have a very, very special guest with us, Dr. Bill Sears, America's pediatrician. My name is Colin Campbell, and I'm moderating this call from Corpus Christi, Texas. My wife, Denise, and I hold the uh, National Marketing Director with the Juice Plus Company out of Colleyville, Tennessee. My wife, Denise and I have been married for over 16 years. Like I said, we're from Corpus Christi, Texas. We have three kids, Carson, who is eight, Caitlin, who is 10, and Colin Jr., who is 13. So yes, with these kids, we're very in tune to our children's health and uh, can't wait to hear what Dr. Sears has to uh, tell us tonight. So let's just let's just get dive right into this and uh, get this baby started. Dr. Sears, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about your background. Well, I grew up in the Midwest, Colin, just north just north of Texas a little bit in Missouri, <clears throat> and um, I grew up in a very financially poor home, but one that was also emotionally rich. I was a child of a single mom. So my heart has always gone out to single moms. And one of the earliest things that my mother did for me that affected my life is she surrounded me with quality male mentors, men of morality. And that, uh, thank you, mom. And this was, this was my start. I just got surrounded with quality male mentors and they, that's affected my life. Oh, that's great. I know mentors play a big role in our lives and, and they sure have in mine. I know that uh, you uh, talk about uh, your man of strong faith and I'm a big believer, been, uh, been saved seven years ago, actually with this company that you and I are a part of, the Juice Plus family, yes. uh, gave my life to Christ and I know that you talk about uh, in, 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 um, the importance of planting that seed of good nutrition at a young age, along with, you know, the strong foundation of God. Can you share with that with us a little more? Uh, yes, Colin. Uh, when you plant healthy seeds, you get healthier flowers. It's as simple as that. And I remember my mother, uh, she wanted me to go to church every day on the walk, on the way to school, beginning around seven, eight years of age. And so my grandmother would make me a big uh, bacon and egg and cheese sandwich, two of them, wrap it in foil. And I'm off and I step by church to a church service on the way to school. And that was uh, even when I didn't want to, yes, Billy, yes, Billy, you will. And that was planted a seed into me that God became part of my life. And in fact, I was even in what's called a seminary for three years, uh, was going to be a priest pastor. And um, I decided to what they call discern out and be a, <laughs> be a father <laughs> instead. And, uh, but faith has always, always, even when we fell away for a while, you know, we got my training up, uh, and then back up in the Northeast, and we kind of fell away for a little while. And, and I remember one time, um, one of my professors telling me that, that God is for people who need a crutch, you know, things like that. When you're young, you take all those things. But then we fell away, but then we came back. We came back because my mother and my grandmother and my grandfather planted the roots into me at a young age when they stayed there and now they bloomed again. Wow, that's, that's, that's exciting to have that strong foundation at such an, such an early age. Your mom just really, that's just, I mean, what a, what a gift. Um, speaking of nutrition and planting those seeds at an early age, man, with uh, today's world loaded with fast foods, Oh, 
What's what's the secret? Well, you know, it's not only loaded with fast foods, it's, it's loaded with bad advice. I'm seeing that. I've been in a pediatric practice now, a pediatrician for 50 years, Colin. I've never seen it so bad. And for example, I have uh, parents coming in, good parents, who say, well, uh, I want my child to be a free thinker. Um, I want them to discover God. I want them to discover good rules of living and eating when they're older, when they can wake up their, make up their own mind. And when I hear them say that, it reminds me of my favorite movie, Dumb and Dumber. You know, you, don't, <laughs> you, you plant seeds when it's young. So this, this trend of waiting until they're older and let them making up their own mind <laughs> just doesn't seldom works. And especially for food. You know, parenting in a nutshell, Colin, is giving your children the tools to succeed in life. And I can't think of a better health tool than planting the seeds of good nutrition. And I start, I'll give you my five tools, the five big ones. In my office, I start early on at, at six months of age, I have what we call the shape young taste talk. Awesome. Shape young taste. And so in other words, we, we don't start out of a box with new food. We don't, the old rice cereal stuff. No, no, no. We start with avocado. Avocado is a fantastic starter food. And then I want to shape their taste to like veggies shape young taste. So I take out a juice plus capsule. I call it my sprinkles and I have moms uh, hold out her hand and I sprinkle a juice plus capsule, the powder on her hand. It smells like veggies, tastes like veggies because it is veggies. And then the child, the little baby, seven months of age, licks it from mom's hand and gets all the green stuff over baby's cute little cheeks. And then I have them do that at home Three, three times a day and they come back in and I, I use my medical practice sort of a laboratory and they say, you know, Dr. Bill, this is my first ch child that actually craves vegetables. And here's why, why shaping young tastes works. So follow me closely. You start early on, you put the veggies on baby's tongue. Mm. And the tongue is richly supplied with nerves and the tongue registers like, and the tongue has nerve pathways from the tip of the tongue to the crave center of the brain. And then maybe we'll talk about later, why does the brain crave vegetables? So the brain texts, uh, the, the tongue texts the brain, hey brain, up is coming your favorite food, veggies, and the brain registers like, gets better. Then the brain sends biochemical text messages down the, down the largest nerve in the body called the vagus nerve. Vagus means wandering all the way down into the gut throughout our whole gut. And the gut registers like, because the gut likes veggies. So you put those capsules on that baby's tongue, a little powder three times a day for two years and you get like, 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 like. And that is imprinted in the baby's crave center for veggies for life. What a tool to leave your children. So that's the first is, is uh, uh, shape young taste. The second is food is discipline. You know, this is what we eat. Honey, I'm sorry, I can't let you eat out of a box. And um, I tell the adults, the more you eat out of a box, the sooner you wind up in a box. But, you know, we just don't eat out of a box. In our and this is what we eat. This is what we believe. This is what we wear. This is how we talk. This is what we eat, period. But mom, I want mac and cheese, honey. This is what we eat. And our kids still tell us today, dad, we did not like that, but you know what? It worked because we learned to like it because we had no choice. And then the next thing I give them, I make things simple for kids. I call it the rule of twos because kids are gorgers, too much, too fast. And I say, I want you to eat twice as often eat half as much and chew twice as long. And I have them memorize that rule of twos. And sometimes to, 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 sometimes I have to add a little potty talk just to make it sink in. And so I tell them, the better you chew, the better you poo. 
And they get that. And mom said, you know, they remembered that. They are chewing much longer. And then also for the picky eaters, you know, I have them eat a little slowly with a nibble tray, especially young, have them eat out of a nibble tray. And then the next, as I say, you hold the five keys to good eating in your hand. I call it my 5S diet. Smoothies in the morning. I have an 18, uh, a 15 ingredient juice plus smoothie. Smoothie in the morning. In the evening, I have salads with spices, number two, and a filet of salmon, another S, and then smart snacking we talked about. And then I fill in the gaps with smart science-based supplements, which is uh, the juice plus, the quad. So that's sort of my, my 5S way of eating, Colin, that I teach in my medical practice and we do in our own family. Wow, very good, very good information. Thanks for that. I know that uh, your website, AskDrSears.com, is one of the most frequently visited websites among parents and expected parents. Mm -hmm. Can people purchase, I know that you've co-authored over 40 books on nutrition, parenting, healthy aging, healthy aging. Can people go to your website and purchase your books? Uh, yes, they can, Colin. That's uh, easy. And uh, our, our newest book is called The Healthy Brain Book. And uh, we are donating all the uh, profits to um, nutritional charities. But the uh, thing about the our website, it was written on the job. 25 years ago, I started writing it. And, and um, what's interesting, in my medical practice, I learned a lot by mothers, from mothers and fathers, once I learned to listen. And so a, a mom would say something really smart to me. And then I'd go out and I'd write it down. And at the end of the day, I'd go home with this list of all these good little tips. And I put them all on the website. <laughs> so that website is kind of a collection of my last 25 years of, of good things that I've learned in medical journals, books, but mostly from our own family and our own parents. So I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, taking advice from from uh, from parents and like the good things that are brought in. That's 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 smart. Well, I know that you've talked about the latest book, The Healthy Brain. And so I, I wanted to uh, jump in to page um, 253. Mm -hmm. You said you uh, quote ADHD. Uh -huh. is, a, is a difference, not a disorder. Yes, it's a difference, not a disorder. And, and Colin, I'll tell you a little medical secret. The only reason uh, these things get labeled disorders is because you can't bill for any illness unless it ends in disorder. Okay? So ADD is a difference, not a disorder. Our brains are different. Many children and adults are wired differently. So we, when I talk to, the, to my patients in my office, say, we're not gonna change your child's brain. We're gonna channel the behavior to work through their advantage. I'll tell you a little story too about when our uh, ADD book came out, we were invited to go on Good Morning America. And Martha and I are sitting there with uh, Joan London on Good Morning America. And uh, Joan says, Martha, where did you get the material for your ADD book? And she looks, at on national television, she says, it's my husband's autobiography. <laughs> so, oh, okay, so guilty. And, and you know, I remember, but this, was, this was before all the drugs, and it, it didn't even have a name. When, when I was in school, see, a lot of children label with ADD, it means we put their brains in an environment in which their particular brain was never meant to thrive. So I'd be sitting in a classroom and I'd be looking out the window. I'd be looking out the window because I wanted to be out the window. And, and my, I'll never forget my fourth grade teacher, Sister Mary Ursula. Ursula means little bear in Latin. And little bear, twice a day, she would say, Billy, you're fidgeting and you're looking out the window again. Go out and run around the schoolyard three times, come back, 
and sit still. Twice a day she did that. That was my Ritalin. Work like a charm. And what's interesting, what's interesting, there was a fabulous study called the Naperville study, where up in Naperville, Illinois, I've given talks there, and um, they they took a lot a lot of of kids who got labeled with the D's, you know, ADD, ADHD, OCD, the D's. I call it stuff, okay? They got yeah, labeled yeah. with all the stuff. And so what they did is they had them come to school a half hour early and they ran them around the schoolyard for a half hour, the track. The girls complained because they got all sweaty. But then they studied these kids. Many could come off their medicines their grades went up, their moods got better just from coming to school earlier and moving. We're meant to move, Colin. When you move, the blood flows to your brain. Wow. So um, having kids sit still for eight hours a day in a, in a, uh, a fake lighting, fluorescent lighting, is not good for the brain. And, and another difference, we have a uh, child number seven, Stephen, we, we number our children, we have so many, we have to number them. Okay, uh, child number seven, Stephen, came into our family, not disabled, but differently abled. He had Down syndrome. He had a different set of chromosomes. So he needed a different style of parenting. So we had to blend our brain with his brain and guide him on a path. And what we do, oh, we kept him lean. We fed him healthy foods from day one. Stephen now is 32, our healthiest, one of our healthiest children. Very good at sports. Uh, he loves golf at the golf club. They call him Harry Putter. He's a very good putter. And what we learned about differently abled he is so sensitive. And I remember one time he was in Special Olympics track and he's running fast and the child next to him fell down. Stephen stops the race, stops, stops running, picks up the child and helps him finish the race. You know, differently abled, yes. See, so sometimes we just have to celebrate the difference in our children. No, that's that's uh, that's great in information. I I, uh, I was labeled uh, ADHD at age five, and mm -hmm. you know I I really think that uh, I was so active, you know, riding the bicycle and wearing out, like you said, you know, two laps around, you know, then coming back, and you know that that does help. It, it really does help. Sure, it, it really it really does, and and you know the brain. See the brain, Colin. The brain. I use the analogy that the brain is the greatest garden ever grown. And what do you need to grow a garden? You need to feed and fertilize it, smart foods. You need to water it, more blood flow, and you need to keep the weeds out, toxic thoughts. So I remember when we were parenting Stephen, I said, this is a garden, Martha, this is a different garden. We gotta help it grow. So first of all, the brain above all other foods is affected most by nutrition. And the reason is it's mostly fat. Our brain is 60% fat. And I to get parents to remember that in my office, I call them fatheads. Okay, you're a fathead. Colin, you're a fathead, I'm a fathead. And they say, well, where's he going with that? Well, what is it about fat? that turns rancid and decays. Why are brain illnesses now the number one illness in America for the first time in history? It's because the fat oxidizes, it turns rancid. You leave a piece of fish out overnight, it smells, stinks. The medical term for stinks turns rancid, it oxidizes. Therefore, what does the brain need to eat? more antioxidants. What does the brain need to take in smart supplements? More antioxidants. And what are the four sources of antioxidants? Fruits, berries, veggies, and omegas. 
the quad. Okay? So that's the first thing, feed the brain well. Movement, what does movement have to do with the brain? Well, the 20% of all the blood that your heart pumps goes to the brain, 20%, even though it's uh, only 2% of what you weigh. So the, be the, the medical mantra is the better your blood flow to your brain, the better your brain. So you get out and you're taking a walk real fast. And you can say to your friends, I'm, I'm watering my brain garden <laughs> by a fast walk. And so that's really what, what movement and nutrition does for our brain. Speaking of the brain, I know that you've covered this um, on some of the key foods, but uh, mental illness, uh, Dr. Sears, is a big topic today mm -hmm. when it comes to health. Uh, in your book, you talk about neurotransmitters. Misfiring can cause such disorders such as depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. bipolar disorders. Mm -hmm. For individuals struggling with all these, you know, I think you've covered it, but I guess, you know, diet can play a huge role. Oh, huge, huge role, huge role. For example, uh, my favorite food, now this has been well studied. And I learned this from traveling with the, uh, uh, the chief neuroscientist at the Brain Health Institute in London, England. We gave lectures together, my, Dr. Michael Crawford, that our brains got bigger and smarter as, as uh, humans when we started eating more out of the sea, seafood. So this is why it, it won, uh, the first thing I do for my patients, I have them eat seafood three times a week Salmon, wild salmon is your top food for all, all the Ds, the disorders. You not, don't believe me? Google the nutrient content of a filet of wild salmon, 10 nutrients. Google the nutrient content of the human brain, put them side by side, it's a perfect match. So we need, eat, need to eat more seafood, more fruits and vegetables. We need to grow our own. Like uh, tonight, I'll go out right after the talk, I'll go out and, and like a little squirrel and, and grab uh, food off my garden. And that's my salad. When our kids come over, little squirrels, they get a uh, tower garden. Kids will eat what they grow. So this is why I think, Colin, the, the, the epidemic of, of uh, mental unwellness is we sit too much and move too little we eat junk food, we don't go outside and play. We're inside and stew. You sit inside and stew instead of going outside and play. Now what, and, and I learned this, is that, let me take you over into Japan for a minute because I learned so much in my lecture travels. And um, one day after one of the lectures, <clears throat> our host said, uh, and Asian lectures are very long, and so I was tired. He said, we're gonna take you all, you and Martha out for some Shinrin Yoku, which I thought was a Japanese drink. So uh, we get in this car, Mr. Saganishi, and we go up to a top of a mountain and into a woods, a tree tunnel. And we get out of the car and he says, see that tree tunnel? That Shinrin Yoku, forest bathing. So let's take a walk. And typical American, I thought, well, this is nice, but it's no, no science behind it. I felt so good after that hour walk. You know, just wonderful. So I studied this, and there's a whole science of what Dr. Mom said, go outside and play, where they've taken people who are depressed, anxious, ADD, all the Ds, wired them up with special measurements, had them take a half hour walk in the woods, and they found that their stress hormones went down, their happy hormones went up, their blood pressure balanced, their whole immune system. Uh, they had healthier fighters in their immune system. Their whole body was back in balance after a good old walk in the woods. So that's why Colin, we need to get our kids go outside and play. And I know it sounds simple, but there's a lot of science behind it. Speaking of... Um... Speaking of science, I know um, in your book, The Healthy Brain, which um, 
it, uh, you talk about, uh, I know that we have a big nutritional gap um, in, a, in our country. You know, I know in your book, you talk about eating um, 10 servings mm -hmm. of fruits and vegetables and, mm -hmm. uh, a day. Um, that's hard for most Americans to do, as you know. Um, you know, I know there's 55,000, the latest I heard, 55,000 supplements on the market today. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I mean, how, how, you know, do you, do you, rec do you, uh, what's your advice on supplementation? Yes, well, you know, we doctors don't have a lot of time in the office, so I have to get my one minute version in my practice. I say, all right, uh, let's say, Colin, for the, uh, and you're not too old, you're just, a, you're just a kid, Colin, so you could be one of my patients. So I say, okay, Colin, for the health you want, you need to eat 10 fistfuls of fruits and vegetables every day. Hold up your fist. Now you're a big guy, so you got big fists. So you need, and even babies, babies, little fists, you need to eat 10 fistfuls of fruits and vegetables every day for the health you want. Uh, too much, doctor, can't do it. You also need to eat a minimum of two fistfuls of wild salmon every week for good brain health. And I don't like fish, doctor, I'm a vegan. Okay, you don't eat it, but you need it. Therefore, you must take it. Follow me? Okay, I don't mm -hmm. I eat it, but I don't eat it, therefore I must take it. So then the brain says, okay, what do I take? Well, and that's why I go into Juice Plus. I say, show me the science. Don't take anything that's not supported with science. Juice Plus, 45 and counting studies. And what got me into the greatest health club I've ever joined, I call it the Juice Plus Health Club, the greatest health club I've ever joined is what I call the bioavailability study, where they actually took Juice Plus eaters, measured, drew blood after they ate the Juice Plus, and they found out what's in the capsule gets into their blood. Bingo. You know, we, we doctors joke in the office, we say half of these supplements, these people come in with their bag of supplements, most of them go in the top end, come out in the bottom end, they never get into the bloodstream because no one measured it. So it gets into the mud bloodstream. And then they have all the science showing that it goes, does good things for the body from head to toe, brain health, eye health, heart health, immune system health. That's the biggie right now, immune system health. Wow. And, and so this is what really got me into, um, I've been taking Juice Plus or eating Juice Plus as real food for now almost 25 years. It's the number one supplement our family takes, I prescribe in my office. And, um, you know, also Colin, I have to say, I've had the um, privilege and the honor to be a, a advisor to the Juice Plus company for almost 25 years. And it's the greatest company of integrity I've ever had the honor and privilege to work with. So thank you. Thank you, Juice Plus. Yeah, well, um, I, as you know, that I um, grew up in, in medicine. My father with a, was a, is a retinal surgeon. He's still practicing today right. at 80 years old. And over 23 years ago, it was uh, definitely what attracted him to Juice Plus, the science. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, and you know, vision, see, the eye is part of the brain. And the eye, the, the what's in the juice plus uh, omega, DHA, it's a vegan source. DHA is the top fat in, in, the, uh, in the eye. And, and one of the things uh, I find, I find eye health is so related to mental health. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And when, when patients come in, and say, uh, you know, I need some help. I say, well, I'm gonna talk, give you two, two happy hours. How you go to bed at night and how you start the day in the morning primes your brain for how you're supposed to behave. So I teach parents, and I learned this from smart parents in my medical practice uh, with, your, with, with kids, five, seven years of age, you lie down with them at night 
and it's called I am, the attitude of gratitude. You say, give me five things you're, you, you like about yourself, honey. I am smart. I am pretty. I am a good soccer player. So the child goes off to sleep. I am, I am, I am. They drift off to sleep. And they get up in the morning to brush their teeth. And they have all this, I am in the morning. I am smart. I am healthy. And I start my morning, parents always say, well, how do you start your morning, Dr. Bill? I start my morning with uh, what I call flotation therapy. Uh, meditation in a swimming pool. <laughs> when you got swimming pools in, in Texas all over, so I'm gonna give this, this little tip. And I call it the attitude of gratitude. And I, I use my mantra in synchrony with the breaststroke, such as, and, and we all have something to be thankful for. No matter how life sucks, you can all pick, pick out four or five things we can be thankful for. And I go, thank you, God, for my life, 81 years. Thank you, God, for my wife, 55 years. Thank you for my health, cancer survivor. Thank you for my wealth, eight kids. Thank you for my MD. Please make it my ministry. I take a deep breath and bring it on. My brain says, okay, we can handle anything during the day. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting better in the morning of, you know, going straight to the word. And, you know, um, it just, it just starts the day you know, on, on such a great note. It does. Well, um, I can't thank you enough, Dr. Sears. You've really shared a lot of great wisdom with us tonight. Um, I just really appreciate your time. Um, any closing comments you have for our audience tonight? Well, you know, my, um, my favorite neurologist, uh, Dr. Mom, uh, would sum it all up, would be, Eat more fruits, vegetables, and seafood. Take science-based supplements. Don't worry, be happy, and go outside and play. That's it. <laughs> yeah, great, 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 great advice. Well, uh, again, thank you, uh, Dr. Sears. We're gonna uh, take this off recording mode. People can uh, tell you thank you, and uh, we we really enjoyed it. It was an honor. Me too. Thank you, Colin.